Hello, my name is Mark Pimentel. I'm a CAM application specialist here at Hawkridge Systems. And in this video, I'm going to show you how you can create a wrapped feature from flat geometry. So flat geometry into a wrapped feature is very simple. All we need to do is know that we can put in linear dimensions in our flat sketches that become angular dimensions for the wrapped feature. So let's see how that's done. First, the basics of flat to wrapped features. Your sketch geometry, whether that be text or an actual sketch of the feature, needs to be on the sensor plane. So this needs to be a plane that is perpendicular to your mill part setup, but also that same plane has to pass through the sensor of the rotary. So whether this is a mill turn or a three plus one machine, you're actually looking at a plane that passes through that center axis. So let's take a look at this piece of sketch geometry right here. This is a engraved feature where that sketch started off as flat and now has been wrapped around the part. You'll notice that the sketch itself was centered on that rotary. It became a centered wrapped geometry as well. So that's another thing to note. When you place your sketch geometry on that uh, sketch plane, if it's centered, then the engraving itself will be centered. If it starts from that center axis, then it starts the wrapped at that zero degree position. Talking about linear dimensions going into wrap dimensions, we need to look at how we would do that. We need some sort of a modifier. And the one I'm gonna suggest is the very basic equation of circumference equals pi times diameter. So this applies to any cylindrical face like our cylinder or even just the circle itself. So any linear dimension can be converted to an angular dimension using this feature. Let's take a look at an example of that back on that part file. So I'm intending to make this helix via a flat line. If we take a look at the sketch of that line, the length of that line, or at least the X dimension and the Y dimension are based off of the cylinder itself. So the height of that line, that right there is just the full length of my cylinder. The dimension I'm using to define the length of that line is pi times five times 10. Pi times five, that is the circumference. So the five represents the diameter of that cylinder. The 10 is the 10 revolutions I'd like to go around this part. So I'm actually going 10 times their circumference because I have that also going up along the length of the part. That ends up creating a helix that has 10 revolutions around my part, like so. So a linear dimension became an angular dimension using the modifier of pi, basically. So if you think of all of your linear dimensions in reference to how they are proportional to the circumference, then a lot of times you can figure out where to place your sketch and the dimensions of that sketch. Talking about placement, let's take a look at my last example, and that is gonna be if I wanna offset it. So before we jump there, let's take a look at that feature. That helix starts right at the zero degree position. And that's because I started my sketch right on that center axis. So if I start that anywhere before or after, I'm actually changing the angular start point of something like a helix or a feature. So let's take a look at how we would offset that. So with these sketches here, you'll see that I have just a simple rectangle in the middle. I'm gonna make a angular slot, a wrapped slot around this cylinder. And I want it to start at this 45 degree position. So I've drawn the 45 degrees here for reference. And I've drawn this line here just for reference as well when we take a look at the feature. It's actually this sketch right here, this rectangle, I'm gonna use for my flat geometry into my wrapped feature. Let's just take a look at that wrapped feature ahead of time. So that is just gonna make that simple slot right there. And if we take a look at this from this point of view, it starts right at that 45 degree position. So how did I actually achieve that? Well, that's all done in the sketch. So first thing I did was I just kind of placed it wherever I wanted along the length of the part. I gave it a, a width of that pocket. And this length here, it could be whatever I want, but it actually happens to represent one quarter of the revolution. I'm, I'm making this a quarter slot on my cylinder. But more specific to this section of the video is how I got it to start at that 45 degree position. And again, that's gonna be an equation. So let's take a look at my equations again. And that's gonna be the degrees offset over the full 360 equals the distance from center over the circumference. This is just a simple proportionality here. So I know that 
the full revolution of the part is 360 degrees, and that full revolution is a distance of the circumference. So all I'm really doing here is saying, well, if the degree offset, the number of degrees I want to be off from that center plane, uh, proportional to the distance from the center. So we're relating an angular dimension to a linear dimension. How that actually works in practice, let's take a look at the part file. So I want it to start at 45 degrees, 45 degrees over the full 360 times my diameter times pi. So it's just a simple proportionality. So this distance right here is proportional to those degrees times the overall circumference. So that simple equation gives me the ability to say, start at the 45 degree position. And I don't have to really remember any extra information there other than a full revolution is 360. The full distance that represents the circle is the circumference, which is pi times the diameter. And then whatever distance I plug in there, either on one side or the other, that would give me my angular position. If I wanted to start 45 degrees on the other side, then I would just have to sketch it starting on that side. So the geometry drives everything inside of SolidWorks CAM and CAMWorks. And for a flat geometry into wrap geometry, all you're really doing is using the basic math of this circumference equals pi times the diameter. Any questions on this or anything else, just give us a call at the main tech support line. If you like these videos, please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And thanks for watching.